West to Harm in Freyond and welcome to yet another video. Uh, that video that I promised is here, uh, the analysis of the teaser trailer for The Lord of the Rings on Prime, uh, or The Rings of Power, as they call it. Now, I shall start with a brief introduction, and if you want to skip to the analysis itself right away, I shall put a, a timestamp in the description down below, so feel free to do so. But I encourage you to listen to my intro. I shall repeat some of the things that I've already stated before. Now, uh, I've said that there are, of course, many ways that we could approach uh, the current situation, because we're not only talking about the teaser trailer, are we? We're not talking about the Lord of the Rings. We are talking about <clears throat> the situation, because everything needs to be a situation today, a fight, a war between two teams, because it's really not about Tolkien, is it, for many people in the world? <laughs> It is for me. It has always been about Tolkien. I'm a Tolkien purist and now a lot of people will laugh. But it seems to me that everybody now on social media, on Twitter, on YouTube, everywhere, in the comment sections, people are competing <clears throat> in how many <laughs> factoids and facts they can Google or they can <clears throat> sorry, come up with from Wikipedia and they are quoting sentences and half sentences of what Tolkien wrote down and what was mentioned in the Lord of the Rings, uh, the appendices or the uh, unfinished tales of the Silmarillion and they are for example taking a sentence or a half a sentence and they are saying it was not specifically mentioned that black elves are not part of Arda. This means that they can be there other people are saying, oh, it's just fantasy, so anything goes. All right. Other people are saying that, oh yeah, but a bone was found in Europe that belonged to an African person, so African people lived in Europe. This is a very uneducated statement. As I have stated many times before, I am approaching this from a point of view of a Tolkien fan and a, a, a man who <clears throat> knows a lot about the European history and myths and folklore, and the fact that Tolkien based his Arda stories, mainly his Middle-earth then, on medieval and pre-medieval Europe, in which there was no huge agglomeration of African-looking people. If there was a bone found, it was of a person that was brought there against their own will, if you know what I mean, or a traveller that happened to be there, but not a huge settlement of these people. I'm looking at this from a point of view of a man who knows that Tolkien felt sorry that his native country, England, did not have enough of its own natural historical stories, and legends and myths. Beowulf comes from Scandinavia, in the areas of say, Germany. King Arthur is more Welsh slash French than English. Robin Hood is more Norman French. So it's not really. The true native English stories, they were lost mainly during 1066 and uh, the dissolution of monasteries during uh, the reign of Henry VIII. So he wanted to provide England with his own legends and myths. And that's why he came up with the Lord of the Rings. I read a letter, a huge part of the letter, that people are taking snippets out of. The fact that um, uh, he left a, a space for other creative minds to... I don't know, maybe what? Change something? Um, change the law completely? Uh, and make uh, the Lord of the Rings S uh, woke SJW? I don't know. I'm sure he didn't intend to do that. So taking half sentences out of context, googling factoids, searching for them on Wikipedia, and then citing, like, you know, you can find this on this and that page. I'm not interested in that. Not at all. I don't know. It is not in my interest. Do you know why? Because I really don't care about arguing with, with, with people. And do you know why? Because this is actually the only thing that um, I feel sorry about, that really strikes my heart. And that is that they have once again managed to take something beautiful, and now I'm talking about the name Tolkien, and make a situation out of it. A 2022 Twitter situation. Everybody's arguing about that. 
I don't care if they are making changes. I don't care if um, the elves have short hair. I don't care if uh, dwarf dwarf women don't have uh, beards. I couldn't care less. You know why? Because I can't care less about the show. The same way I don't care about the Witcher show. It's, it's the same thing. I love the Witcher books. I've reread them like a dozen times. But I just couldn't care less about the show. I mean, I've seen a couple of episodes. I made a video about that and I almost threw up. Well, the same thing is, you know, the Rings of Power. But at least with The Witcher, it didn't go as far as uh, making a situation out of it. And dragging Andrei Sapkowski's name into it. But everybody's now a talking expert now. Everybody's a talking expert. Sort of. I mean, come on. So, I'm making these videos. Why I... And you could be asking, why are you making these videos if you don't care? Because it's fun to make videos. And I love the Lord of the Rings. Come on, you nitwits. All right. I'm not going to play the sound because the sound is useless anyway. They say nothing. Like, have you ever wondered if there's something more? <laughs> yes, it refers to the fact that they are going out of uh, the things and the places that we know from the Lord of the Rings films. Da, before the king, before the fellowship, uh, people are arguing like, oh, what king do they mean? There were like a bloody hundred kings of elves, hundred, hundreds of kings of elves, hundreds of kings of men, la, la, la. They are, of course, referring to the return of the king. So they, you know, spark some, oh, memories in the, in, the, in the minds of normies who haven't read the books. Come on. And the narration is, I don't know, read by Galadriel. Who knows? Who cares? All right, so we've got this. I thought initially that this was Valinor. This was Alqualonde, but it's actually um, Numenor, which uh, has been officially confirmed that this is Numenor. And there's, there's, there's one thing, like, the visuals are nice, the visuals are good, I've said it many times before. If this wasn't The Lord of the Rings, I would say, oh, it's a nicely looking show, nicely looking fantasy show, I'll check it out, because it's something that I've never seen before. And we are going back to the fact that, you know, except, I mean, at least for me, in my mind, in my brain, in my heart, my Tolkienist heart, this doesn't resemble Tolkien at all, or The Lord of the Rings. It might to you, but it doesn't to me. So, if it wasn't called The Lord of the Rings, I would say, oh, I shall check that out. Alright. So, Numenor, obviously. It has been confirmed. Uh, these are the, the two fellas that are wandering uh, the uh, you know prairies of Middle-earth. New characters, new wandering fellas who we know nothing about. It's Amazon invention, who cares? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into speculations like, oh, what could that be? Who could that be? No, I don't care. If it's made by Amazon, I don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's uh, she apparently she's um she's a half foot. Um, called Eleanor or Nori. Now I could of course incorporate my Tolkienist heart and knowledge and say Eleanor. Well, that was the flower that the elves brought to Numenor, and not even mentioning the fact that the hobbits were not. In the Silmarillion, but why was she called Eleanor? Why, 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 why was she called an Elvish name when they couldn't have met the Sindarin elves yet? And in Sindarin, uh, Eleanor actually man, means sun star. And there was an Eleanor hobbit character in the Lord of the Rings, was Sam's daughter, and he named her. And Frodo actually suggested that he na Sam named his daughter Eleanor. Or, alternatively, they also, which has also, have, you know, been confirmed, called Nori. Well, Nori, we of course know Nori as a dwarven name from The Hobbit. But it's also, as every, or most of the dwarven names in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit was taken directly from the Icelandic Eddas, the collection of uh, old Norse uh, poems, heroic and uh, mythological. So I could say that. Like, why is she called uh, Eleanor in, in Sindarin when she's obviously uh, like, a, like a prehistorical looking hobbit? I'm sorry, like, like she looks like a, like a cave, caveman hobbit. 
I mean, yeah, all right. You will argue. She's a hard food. Yeah, okay, fine. Who cares? It's Amazon. Like, no. No, no. I, no. Before the king, as I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Helgaraxe, obviously, this must be Helgaraxe. When Galadriel um, was uh, a part of the, uh, you know, Noldor leaving Valar, uh, Valinor, they, uh, she did not follow Feanor in the slaughter uh, of, uh, you know, his kin, or the kin slaying. So she joined the other group and, you know, they traveled through Helgaraxe, which was like this sort of uh, a, you know, land that connected Valinor and Middle-earth back then. Um, and it was called, you know, one of the greatest um, deeds of the elves, or one of the greatest journeys that the elves did, because a lot of them died on the way. It was like the Trail of Tears. Uh, so that might be, you know, filled with nice action scenes, and would be, you know, very heartwarming, and heart-grasping, and sad, and so on, and so forth. Yeah, that, you know, depicting this on screen, if done correctly, you know, why not? A lot of people are complaining, oh yeah, Galadriel is wearing an armor. I mean, she was never a part of any huge battle. Never, ever. But, I mean, why not? If And she also didn't, like, except for the, you know, journey over Helkarak, say she never really did any great journey of her, of her own. Like, adventurous journey of the, of the kind of Frodo did, and, and or Bilbo, the Fellowship of the Ring. Which, of course, means that Amazon just wants to take an already awesome, fantastic and perfect female character and make her even more, like, you know, girl power. Unnecessarily, I, I would say. Because Galadriel, on her own, as Tolkien wrote her, and then Peter Jackson depicted her, is one of the most powerful beings in Arda. And, quite honestly, one of my favourite characters. I see no need to make her even better, because she can't be made better. So, if you try to make a perfect thing better, you can only spoil it, because you can't go up from the perfect, right? Yes, this is of course bullshit. I mean, like, she's scaling uh, icebergs in armor. This is like, you know... I know she's an elf, but come on. And she would be freezing. I, I don't... You know, yeah, she's an elf, but, uh, you know, they can die. They are immortal, but they can die. They can be killed. They can freeze to death if they are wearing armor in a place where there's freezing, you know. Well, I mean, I like the actress. She's cute. She's good looking. Yeah, be be before the fellowship. Oh, yeah, the new fella. I'm blanking on his name. I don't care. It's a new fella devised by Amazon. Some people are theorizing that he could be Anatar, actually, that he could be disguised Sauron, um, and that he could actually be traveling with Galadriel. So, what? To distract her attention from seeking, what? Seeking uh, the Silmarils, but that was before. So it, that's, that's the time when Morgoth has already, you know, like been chased away and uh, locked by the Valar in the, you know, other sphere. And why? To get her attention from... Uh, I, I don't know, why would Galadriel be traveling with Sauron, with Anatar? She was uh, the chief of the elves who recognized that Anatar wasn't kosher at all. She didn't believe him. She was one of the first elves who actually recognized that he was Sauron. And once he put, uh, once, you know, they put their rings on, the elven rings on, and Sauron put his the one ring on, uh, you know, she was one of the bearers of the original three rings, Nenya. So she recognized it right away. She, you know, uh, took it off. So she was, uh, like, you, you, you couldn't fuck with Galadriel, come on. I have already made a, a, an entire video about this. I mean, go to my channel. I'm not going to be talking about the fact that I'm not really excited about Black Elves. And yes, some people were saying that... Uh, and that was an actually like uh, a comment that resembled uh, something that made sense, but of course it didn't uh, in the end. Somebody says, oh, uh, but there were um, like elves in Norse myths. Um, what was the comment? Uh, uh, I have some notes here. 
uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a person who said to me that there was uh, Svartalfar in the Norse myths. Uh, dark elves or black elves, they are called. Well, they are well called Svartalfar, black or dark elves, because they were more, more akin to dwarves. Uh, some people or some academics speculate that uh, there were actually dwarves was another uh, like name for dwarves and they were living underground They were shunning the light. That's why dark or black elves not because they look uh, uh, um, African So yeah I'm not laughing at the guy uh, Grasping an arrow like look at what Legolas did in uh, you know the Lord of the Rings films Before the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah This is Gil-galad. It's a it's been confirmed I mean, yeah, Galadriel action scenes. They are obviously going to make uh, Galadriel like go on a on an adventurous journey and be the badass, like girl power character, uh, the fighter, the warrior. And some people say, oh well, you know, but she was a witness to many of these atrocities. Yes, she was, but first and foremost, she was. And now I'm I could use an example taken from Peter Jackson's trilogy because the way he depicted her was really the perfect way. She was the High Lady Galadriel of the Noldora race, the Enchantress, the Elven Witch, the most powerful being, apart from Sauron and Gandalf and, you know, people like that. There, 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 was, there was no need for her to, you know, grab a sword and go to a battle in an armor. It, does, it just doesn't fit her. Is it Elrond or is it, I don't know, the, the, this guy is disguised, but is it, um, I mean, uh, what have I written down? This, I, I don't rec recognize this actor. It might be the Elrond character or it might be Finrod, I don't know. That's a creature. Uh, yeah, during the fourth, I mean, like, he was just mentioned once in the appendices, so they are going to make up. An entire story about uh, during the fourth. I don't mind Elrond having short hair. Ah, uh, yeah, Disa. I mean, speaks for its own. I'm not going to go into depth about Amazon's made up things, it's just not worth my time. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, this is like the little boat that uh, Galadriel is going to be traveling on with this new fella. Again, who cares? You know, some action scenes, like, okay. And this was Finrod, apparently. Um, was it Finrod? Yeah, Finrod Felagun. They have uh, confirmed that this is actually Finrod Felagun, the brother of Galadriel, who was actually um, saved uh, during the Battle of Dagor Bragolach by uh, Barahir. Uh, one of the, you know, first uh, men, like humans, that lived... Uh, in Middle Earth, and they became great friends. And uh, Finrod Felagun that uh, gave his ring to Barahir, that became the Ring of Barahir. Of of course, that in the end ended up on uh, Aragorn's finger, that we also have seen in the Peter Jackson's trilogy. Uh, but you know, and this scene in particular could be the scene when uh, actually. Uh, they say, like, he saved him, right? He was saved by Barahir. So I think that uh, this scene is uh, depicting the scene when Barahir saved Finrod and then he gave him the ring. Of course, Finrod then made, uh, like, uh, met Beren uh, from the Silmarillion and they were imprisoned together by Sauron. And then Sauron sent, uh, like, you know, werewolves um, to, well, F them up. And Finrod then saved Beren and he was mortally wounded, and you know, he died, and he was one of the very few Eldar um, that were allowed to be reincarnated in Valinor and leave the halls of Mandos and then, you know, live with the Valar reincarnated in Valinor until the end of times. But I'm not, I, I don't think they are going to depict this, what I just said in this show, because they don't care, they don't know that. Uh, and this should be like the stranger, it should be one of the Maiar. But apparently not Gandalf, so I don't know. Who cares? It looks more like uh, Radagast hand from the Hobbit films. But once again, who cares? And now what did I do? All right. Ah, the rings of power. I couldn't care less. 
what I said in the introduction is the truth. I really don't care about uh, this show. I'm only going to be doing the reviews because of this channel. Uh, the only thing that really uh, does bother me is the fact that there's, you know, been an entire situation over Tolkien. And, um, yeah. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And that will be all. Namaste.